Hello, uh, and welcome. Welcome to, today, to today's discussion with two incredible MISMA collaborators, artist director Darreen Hotet and writer actor Hala Alien. Uh, I'm Michelle Baroudi, and I'm the curator for MISMA's film series and for the Arab Film Festival, which is happening right now. Um, I'm here to introduce our guests today, but I'll also be here to help moderate the discussion by posing a few questions and also passing along audience questions. For the audience, I encourage you all to ask questions as they come to you, and, but we'll address all of them towards the end um, when we get about 30 to 40 minutes in. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with MISNA um, or with our festival, we are an Arab Swana run arts organization and nonprofit based in the Twin Cities. Minneapolis and St. Paul in Minnesota. We produce many projects that focus on Arab Swana art, like for example, this annual Arab Film Festival, a monthly film series, and a biannual literary journal focusing on the work of Swana American artists. Um, I keep using this acronym Swana, uh, which means Southwest Asia and North Africa, for those of you who don't know. Um, and at Mizna, we like to use this term to try and draw out the complexity of the regions we champion and represent, but we also do this um, as an intentional move to decolonize our spaces, refusing the colonial term, the Middle East. I use this example to situate the work we do at MISA and to give you some insight into the kinds of questions we grapple with through art, lit, and film. To learn more, definitely check out MISNA, M-I-Z-N-A dot org. Today's conversation, which I'm very, very excited to be a part of, um, is focused on the collaboration between two artists, Darin and Hella, who I think grapple, grapple with really similar issues and questions, working to locate identity and belonging at the intersection of language and image. Their work centers and maintains cultural difference and expands ideas about gender, race, family, and mental health. Darin and Hella have collaborated on multiple projects together, including the two short films, that we're screening as part of the of the Twin Cities Arab Film Festival this year, which hopefully you've had a chance to watch. But if not, make sure to check them out after this discussion. The films are Tallahassee uh, from 2020 and I Say Dust from 2014. We are so happy to have them here today um, to talk a little bit about their process, to also talk about these two films. Um, but first, I'll tell you a little bit more about each of them. Uh, Darin Hotet is a New York-based American Lebanese writer and film director. Her work fo focuses on the politics of identity, Arab and African diaspora, and science fiction. She's written and directed a dozen award-winning narrative short films that can be seen on Sundance Channel, The New Yorker, AMC, BBC, Forb Forbes, and Outfest, as well as many others. Her work has received the support of the Sundance Institute, Comedy Central, the Independent Film Project, the Jerome Foundation, New York Council on the Arts, and New York Foundation for the Arts. Hotate is the founder of Cinephilia Productions, which is a film incubator program that champions African and Arab filmmakers. Hella Alien is the author of sorry, is the author of the novel Salt Houses, winner of the Dayton Literary Peace Prize and the Arab American Book Award and finalist for the Chautauqua Prize. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, as well as the recent novel, The Arsonist City and four award-winning collections of poetry, most recently, The 29th Year. Her work has been published by The New Yorker, The Academy of American Poets, Lit Hub and Guernica. Hella is the writer, producer, and lead actress of the New Yorker screening room film, Tallahassee, which premiered at 10th, the, the 10th Black Star Film Festival. She lives in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, where she works as a clinical psychologist. Thank you, Hella and Jareen, for joining us today. Um, it's Thank great you. to have you with us. Hi. Hi. Hi, it's so great to have you with us. Um, and to share your work and your collaborations. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we're so excited to be here. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to start with a question just about how the two of you began this collaboration. How did you meet and start working together? What was the first project that you collaborated on? So we, it's funny, I actually had met um, Denine's partner at the time first. We, there was this like, uh, what was the organization called? Um, Oh, we were at um, Alwan. At Alwan, Alwan for the Arts yeah. in New York. Um, and they had brought in like 
they brought me in to do poetry. They brought in like a composer, a pianist, a clarinet, like just like multidisciplinary artists to basically do a week long residency. All of Arab, um, all had like Arab or Swana heritage. And then we put together a show at the end and that came to the show and we met then and just like really hit it off. And, and I love her poetry. I was like, oh, I was so impressed. I'm like, who is this person that I've never yeah, met Yeah, it was a love affair from the first moment. <laughs> yeah. We got very connected and then we, and then Dedeen took, um, but came to a reading and I guess heard one of the poems yeah. and really liked it and then wrote this like beautiful script around it. Um, and that was I Say Dust. So yeah. uh, I, I saw Hada performing and I was really impressed. And then I reached out to her and I'm like, Hada, can you send me your, your like three poems? Uh, that I love to read and then I read the three of them and I was like let's I want this one yeah and I started writing the script for I Say Dust and I incorporated the poem as a like a like a main main element of like storytelling structure mm. and it became like the, the main piece of the film the, the, po the poetry yeah. I wrote everything around it yeah that's really um that's exciting I didn't know that that you that the poem was the inspiration for the creation of the film absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. And then for Tallahassee, I guess a couple of years later, I wrote, I mean, I wrote Tallahassee years ago and we like talked, we like, we had always stayed in touch. I mean, we stayed friends, we stayed in touch and talked about like working on projects again and like we'd like brainstorm ideas and things like that. Um, and then we got like close to making Tallahassee like a thousand times. <laughs> we had so many attempts. We had so many like film. almost. And then last year, and we we filmed like right before COVID, like yeah. right before lockdown. It was like two weeks before COVID yeah. um, lockdown happened. We were and like the kid actor got pink eye. Like we got so like close so to not being able to do it. And then we were just like, we just have to do it. We're too we, yeah. we're too invested. Like we we yeah. just got to move forward. Um, but it had been in talks for a long time. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Someone in the audience says that they love both films. I agree. They're both incredible. Yeah. Um, you you have both worn sort of multiple hats, I suppose, in these collaborations, right? Producing, writing, directing, editing, acting, you know, like just sort of thinking even about Darian, as you were saying, kind of building building this script around around Hella's poem. And um, I guess just hearing a little bit more, I'd be really curious to hear more about that process. What's it like for you? Um, like, do you go into these projects knowing what each of you will be doing or does that just develop organically through the process? I think with I Say Dust, it was more like clear mm -hmm. how we were going in mm -hmm. and like having the, the poem being like the main, um, the, the main inspiration for the script itself. I feel like it was like an adaptation of poem into a screenplay that was kind of like yeah, the process yeah, of that yeah. film. That's and crazy. I knew that like from the get, like even before having the script written down, I knew that Hala's gonna star in the film. Like it was like not even negotiable. So <laughs> like, you're gonna act in the film. So like, what are you talking about? Because yeah, I'm not, I'm not an actor. actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, are you sure? Like, I'm so sure. <laughs> like, I'm so sure. You don't even know how to write. <laughs> And then when we when uh, when we were working on Tallahassee, we kind of had some ideas. Uh, we, I mean, the script was written by Hella, and then we knew I'm directing it. Hella was kind of still like in her like humble space of like, "Are you sure you want me to act? Like, are you really sure?" I'm like, yeah. "What are you talking about? People love you." And I said, "I'm like, you gotta do this." <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll do it. But like, if you have any other people, like, I'm also open to that. And, like, I'm I'm not open to that. You're gonna do that. <laughs> You're gonna. She you was know, very. She was very <laughs> like. Very, yeah, she was very insistent yeah. on it, which is great. I mean, it pushed me out of my comfort zone. I think like, in some ways, I see dust felt e. Mm. I think easier. It was yeah. more nerve wracking because it was the first time I did something like that, but it was easier because a big chunk of it is the poem. And I know how to do that. Like I've been doing that for years. Yeah. So a big chunk of it was just like perform, perform the poem effectively. Um, and whereas this is more, this one, yeah, it's just, it, it, there's more of an emotional mm -hmm. range. There's more that happens. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm fine just being the, like, you know, the writing and doing the producing and whatever. Um, yeah. But yeah, she, she, she pushed. Yeah. And, and we knew that Hela's gonna be a producer on the film as well. Like as we were From the beginning, up, yeah. we knew that it's yeah. gonna be a writer, producer, yeah. actor with, you know, me being a producer and director on the film as well. So we kind of like- Yeah, we, knew, that we knew there were gonna be yeah. multiple hats from yeah. the beginning. It was, I think the, the main last puzzle piece was like, would I act in it? Um, was sort of like the, the, the or I mean, it wasn't a question for her. It wasn't a question for her. For me, the, the last question was, would I act in it? I'm not even sure. <laughs> yeah, she didn't, she really didn't have conversations about it at all. 
<laughs> she's like, I will convince you. Got it on her yeah. <laughs> yeah, she that is like it, yeah, there was a lot of like letting me talk things out and then be like, okay, so yeah, it's gonna be you. And <laughs> we're like moving on. <laughs> When you wrote this script, Tella, did you, you did not envision yourself acting in? I, I've like, I, I think I have like a fantasy of acting. Um, so there's, you know, there's like a, there was like an, oh, if, if I could do something like this, it would be really fun. It would be like really cool. But I think when we got closer to actually making it, I started having second thoughts and being like, I actually really like the story. And I love your direct. Like, I, it was like, we have like a really good team here let's maybe get someone who's been doing this for a long time. Like I just started, like, I kind of wanted it to be, I guess my perfectionism kicked in and I was like, I just don't know if I'm like, good enough. Um, but, but no, I think, I think the, yeah, I think the closer we got, the more I got nervous. And then when she kind of talked me through that, then it was sort of like, okay, I'm just going to double down and do this. Like, I'm going to just, you know, like throw myself into it. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, like the first time I read the script of Tallahassee, I, I kind of like, I'm reading a writer who knows exactly what this character is going through inside out. Like, it's just like, yeah. like I had no question around the understanding of the writer yeah. of, of the subject matter and the character's evolution and emotional art. So I just like, like that's the most important thing for me as, as a director is like having an actor who really understands the inside out of the character to be able to perform it. And that, that's why like I had, I had no, like, no question around the fact of that. Like it was so yeah. clear in the writing itself. It was more about like making sure that had us comfortable <laughs> around <laughs> others. Like, like and, and I see that's it was just like two, just like two actors, just like two people with pain. Yeah, with that's with, true. with that's this true. one, it was so many different interactions that she has with the kid, with yeah. her sister, with her mom, yeah. with her grandmother. Like so many different interactions that all of them require a different yeah. kind of um, like ability to perform and to deliver. And I, I knew that she was the dance. Yeah, the kid, I think the kid in particular was very like, it was unlike anything yeah. I've ever done before. Because you are, I mean, he he was he's an amazing actor. Yes. And he's also a kid. Yeah. You know, so he'd be like, I'm tired. We'd be like doing scenes and be like, I don't want to do this anymore. And he'd be like, yeah. Okay, so we can't just not do this anymore. <laughs> we have like another hour. We gotta finish the scene. So it's like working. Yeah, it's, it was very, it was very, it's very interesting yeah. to work with a kid yeah. in scene and like both be trying to act mm -hmm. and also be trying to like mitigate whatever yeah. they're going through. Yeah, yeah. I love like moments on set with like Hala and the kid, where the kid is telling Hala, "That's not your line." And like, the, yeah, he's like, like, "That's not your line." Not your line. Like, like, no, kind of like, your timing like, is not yeah. right. Yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> He just doesn't know that she's a writer as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like that was really funny. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty funny and very charming. <laughs> yeah, so, well, he was a he's great. He was he's great. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So the kid was really great. Yeah. Do you feel like Doreen then you know just sort of thinking about as a director working with an actor who feels who is clearly amazing and incredible in the performance you know that you give Hala and uh in Tallahassee is in both films but and you know particularly thinking about Tallahassee and the different you know just the the complexity of that character because you see that character interacting with all of these different characters um what's the experience like as a director you know bringing an actor to you know be like yeah you got this this is this is your role you know it's really I would, I would say first, like, I've been really lucky to, like, have cast um, actors and non-actors to work mm -hmm. with me who are really able to just, you know, come in with their own interpretation of things and their own understanding of things. That kind of really influences my work as well. Like, as much prep you do as a director, it's always good to listen to your actor when how they are interpreting the character that they will play. And that really influences a lot the way I go about directing them, whether like how much, how much I give, how much room I give them to do their own thing, how much, you know, how much I can I limit that. But I think a big part of the process is what we do before we get on set. Mm. So once I get on set, there's not much talking to be done. It's more about blocking the scene of like, okay, you move from here to here. They already know what they're thinking, their interior monologue, all of that from before, because we do a lot of like 
reading of the script. We did a, we did a, yeah, a really table nice reading. table reading yeah. here, actually. We're at Palace Beach right now. This yeah. is where we shot the film. Yeah. If you can recognize, we're sitting on the couch where we're reading the, <laughs> of the grandmother storytelling. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, we did a table read here with all the actors. And this is when, as a director, that this is the time for me to be receptive of all kind of questions and suggestions and everything that might not be you know, clear. And just clarifying the dynamics of all the characters, how yeah. they're feeling, what's their backstory, why do they do this here, how are they feeling here as they do it, and, and then everybody is now aligned with what we're doing, so when we get on set, they're already prepared, I don't have to go through that anymore, I'm more focused on like locking them in the scene, working them with the camera, things like that, but the understanding of, of the characters and all that is done before, uh, and that's where I, I you know, I, I, I give so much space to just be a listener, as a director and I answer the questions of, of my actors and that's how I like to work usually. Yeah, that's great, thanks. Which I think I'll jump in and say, which also makes shooting much less stressful yeah. because I feel like as on the other end of it, because mm -hmm. it feels like we've already kind of done the things that we need to do. And yeah. now it's just a matter of like, this is where you stand, this is where you sit, this is how you walk through the room. Um, so it makes it, it takes a lot of pressure off mm -hmm. on the day of the shoot too. Yeah, also like I kind of like on set, I would be like hearing them talk, like while I'm doing something, I like I'd be yeah. hearing like Shireen and Hala on the side yes. talking about a certain scene that they're yes. gonna be in later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I already know that whatever it is, the work that they're doing together is so precious it's because so they are going to be in that scene and, and they're kind of like giving each other room to to breathe in the yeah. scene and to kind of, yes. and, and, and that was really, I think that was really clear in, the, in, the, in one of the scenes towards the end of the film where they have an argument in the street. And that if they didn't do that work on their own, that would have been really hard yeah. to just do it because we also had very limited time on set. And we didn't have a lot of time before to do a lot of rehearsals, but they were able to sit together. And what really helped is that Hala wrote the script. So kind of, she also has a lot of understanding of what's happening right. there. So that really, and I would give credit to Hala here because that really helped me as a director in some places because I was going under like production stress and I'm like, I right. need to do all of these things. Can you do that? You know? Can you talk to the kid? Can you, can you explain to the kid about what's happening? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. a lot of that kind of really yeah. helps with in, in the process. Usually these are things that you would assign to your assistant director. Right. Um, and because we had a very, like, very limited time of shooting and so many scenes and a lot yeah. of obstacles and challenges, weather <laughs> and the kid and limited time, limited, so many so much stuff. Yeah. And Hala helps a lot in, in that and like making all of these, you know, scenes with others kind of like, like very uh, easy when we started rolling the camera. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we worked really, I mean, we yeah, worked really well yeah. with each other. Yeah. I think it was a really nice, I think it, Tallahassee in particular was like, there was a lot of fluidity when yeah. you talk about sort of like the hats people were wearing. There was a lot of like, you know, yeah. that he's busy doing this. This person has a question about something. Okay, I can answer that question. Or like, mm -hmm. and even like when we were talking about the script and going through the table read, like that Ian, I wrote it, but then he would be like, well, what's the motivation here? What's the mm -hmm. desire here? And that would sort of clarify like my understanding of the character. So there, yeah, it was just a really lovely kind of, there was a lot of like moving in and out of these different mm -hmm. roles in a way that really worked. Yeah. We, we also like had a very, very solid team. Behind the scenes. We did. We, our producers, Munir and Daya were amazing because they kind Incredible. of did the heavy lifting of like- And Hayat. And Hayat. Like, oh, oh my God. 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 We had a, an incredibly, yeah. team with us they were really working their heart they really did they just poured their heart into it and yeah. that helped us so much the two of us totally. to, to, to perform our roles in, in, yeah. the, in the project so, yeah. yeah we had a really lovely time yeah. that's great this is all really good um just thinking about you know collaborations can be really hard <laughs> like but it seems like this collaboration is is just really works super well you work really well together as you were just saying and just do you have advice for folks you know because filmmaking is I mean like writing sometimes feels like it's something that you do on your own but that's not you know when you're writing a script that not that's you know you you do need to like it needs to communicate to other people and um you know filmmaking is so collaborative and i mean so many different types of um work that artists are doing is collaborative so do you do you have any advice for just like how to how to navigate collaboration in these in different art spaces i think it's hard i mean it's i think we've been very lucky 
and that our temperaments like work really well with each other. You know what I mean? Like there, there's, there, they're just from the beginning, like we haven't, yeah, there's like not, there's no headbutting. There's no, like, if we disagree, we just like talk it out. Like there's, it's just been like a very laid back dynamic, um, which I think is, it's hard to give advice around that. Cause it's just like, it's just what happened. It just happened that like we have temperaments that like complemented each other and like we're sort of opposite in certain ways that work really well and then similar in ways that work really well. Um, but I do think there is something to be said for like some, like what we, what worked really well with Tallahassee was there was a delineation of tasks. So there was like fluidity in terms of day of on the shoot, people had to be like flexible and like do multiple roles. But I think leading up to that, there was kind of a delineation there. And there was just like, I think work with people that you trust maybe is the best piece of advice. Work with people whose art you like and respect because then I there was never a time where I was like, Oh, but like, are you, can you do this direction for this? I don't even know what that means. I don't know anything about direction. So it's like, there wasn't, there wasn't there, and there was no time where it's like, you know, the questions that were asked about like acting or, 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 or the script from that were always like in the service of making this, pro- it was, everything's in the service of the project. Everything's yeah. in the service of this final product. Like we're here for the film and to make like the best possible film we can. And I think if you work with people that have are aligned on that vision, you can keep egos out of the way. You know what I mean? Because then you're like, we're all here in the name of this thing that we're trying to make, Mm -hmm. trying to like birth into the world. Um, So yeah, I mean, I think I would say like working with people you trust, everyone kind of staying, not in their own lane in like an aggressive way, but almost in a like, just trust the other person, you know? So I trust that the other person can bring what they need to bring to the table. And then you can kind of focus on keeping your side of the street clean, so to speak. What do you think? Oh, totally. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be funny if you're like, I disagree with all of them. I, totally disagree. And I don't want to work with you ever again. No, you're like, like, over. You watch the dissolution Whatever of this like, collaboration no. in real time. That's not what happened. <laughs> yeah. It was a lie. Yeah, we hate each other. <laughs> um, Salem uh, has a couple questions. Um, and maybe the first, the second one first, uh, just this, you know, how... Uh, how how do how do you get started as, as an Arab woman living in the Midwest where there aren't that many opportunities to work with people that are like minded? You know, how do you and, and just maybe even how do you get started? I think is part of the question as an artist. Like you start with an idea. Sounds silly, but I'm but I'm being serious. You start with an idea and then you wait. And then you wait a little bit more and then you wait a little bit more and you see if that idea haunts you and if it keeps coming back to you. And if it's sort of like a song you can't get out of your head, then that means there's probably something worth following in that idea. Um, and then you talk it out with people or you start brainstorming or sketching or you know doing whatever it is, the storyboarding or whatever, whatever, because I don't know if, what this, if this person's talking about film in particular. So if it's film, then you start figuring out how to store the storyboard. Then I think you find like-minded people, even if they're not there, not in the same city as you. Mm-hmm. Like that's been the one, I mean, w- one of the unexpected advantages or, or, you know, benefits of the pandemic is that all of these spaces, I mean, we're here having this conversation. We wanted to be there in person, we weren't able to, but we're still able to have this conversation because now there's been a shift into more hybrid programming and hybrid spaces and whatever. So it's like, take, you know, if you can take a screenwriting class in New York or in LA and just like join it remotely. Um, find a meetup group that's based in the city, like find a creative arts therapy group that's like based in the city. Like I think there's, in the city is the only city, but like based in like one of the cities that like you feel like you met, you're more likely to find people that are a little bit like-minded. Um, I think that that would be the way that I would go about it. Join a writing group if you can, you know, like there's, yeah. there, there's a lot of community to be had, especially now, you can actually access it from across the world in a way that you just couldn't, you, it was unthinkable. Like there's like poetry, like, you know, you yeah. go to the Near Recon or something, you just, it wasn't an option to go to the open mic at the Near Recon if you lived in Boston, right? like a year and a half, it just wasn't even on the table. And now you can join it from, from anywhere mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. because it's like available online. Um, so I would, I would say taking advantage of that, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have thoughts in terms of like directing. Or, I, I like, think like just really like what Hannah said and, and just engaging with the community and just yeah. getting to know what, what what's out there, um, who are the people producing work that's aligned with your you know artistic values and, and the stories that you want to tell, and then like see if there's room for collaboration there. You just want to start by knowing like aligning yourself with 
the community that's around right. you or like somewhere else. Right. Um, and that's how you can, you know, I think that's how you can identify potential collaborators. Um, yeah. That's great advice. Thanks. Um, the second question uh, is about the LGBTQ, LGBTQIA plus representation um, and deeper conversations about addiction, mental health too. Um, was there was there a reason that those were the two topics chosen in each film, or that you know where did you how did those two arise in each of the projects? And, and I say that's the, it was like more of like a, it was an organic choice, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, to to just have the, the dynamic be between two two women um, in the film. Um, I, I wasn't really going for like this film is going to mm -hmm. be an LGBT film. It was, that was not the, the purpose of the film. Uh, I wanted to like make it very organic, uh, just normalize the relationship in a way where it's not the first thing that you think about. The first thing that you think about is who are these people? Uh, what do they want? Uh, how, how did they get to be um, together in this space? What really brought them together? Just asking bigger questions that are just, you know, beyond the, 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 the gender question mm -hmm. that is like, that comes up uh, in these conversations. And just, you know, try to look at the story from a place of, um, you know, um, what what do these people want? What, why are they together? More than like just who they are and, and just identifying them in, in such a in such a way. And for and for Tallahassee, I think you want to talk about that. For Tallahassee, I mean, I just it, it, the pre, the idea was that this person is re-entering the world on the day that they're being released from some sort of facility. So from that, from like the idea was built around kind of that, the, the premise of mental health. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist and I, at the time was, you know, had just like done a, a fair amount of work in like rehab center, like re rehabilitation facilities and inpatient units and things like that. So there's, there were many years of my life where I was just in and out of those spaces as a provider. And I, I think because I'm also a writer would always be thinking about what it would like to be in there as a client or as a patient. Um, I'm also sober myself. And so like, I think there, those, those issues are like near and dear to my heart. So I think that sort of like the perfect storm of all of those things getting combined was being like, what would it be like to, you know, to, to, to kind of be in that space and then released early and then kind of be released back to the dysfunction of your family who like have lied to everyone about why you've been, you know, where you were. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's similar. It wasn't like, I must now sit down and write a short film that is based that shed light on the stigma of mental health. I mean, but very few projects are right. Like very yeah. few things are in general. Like um, it was more that I was just was interested in kind of the setting and the tension of somebody being there from a certain cultural background and then having to kind of face their family um, and face sort of like the, the stigma that I would come across with it. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Uh, so both projects, I, I feel like deal also with, with diaspora, you know, I think I say dust deals with this somewhat more directly, um, in a way. Um, and just, I was wondering, what did you learn about telling the story of diaspora between these two projects and, you know, what kinds of questions frames the building of each of these narratives and this idea of like building around the poem, right. That I say dust sort of was an adaptation of a, of a, po of a poem, which is not something we, you know, we hear like we, we know of literary adaptation, but this idea of sort of adapting from a poem is, is really, is really fascinating and sort of even like allowing intermediality, right. To like enter into this, this, the way that the, the film plays out and it's much more experimental um, whereas Tallahassee feels more, you know, narr uses narrative form, uses film conventions, uses those conventions a little bit more in a straightforward way. And yet both of the films are sort of dealing with in, you know, in some way diaspora. So um, what was the experience like, I suppose, of like making I Say Dust and then coming to Tallahassee and telling a story that, you know, where diaspora is central, but also sort of feels somewhat tangential to what's what's playing out? In the narrative, that might have been a lot. <laughs> like that's no, that's a great question. Um, I, I think they both kind of have. They're both asking the same question, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Like I say, this is more like asking what is home, and Tallahassee is like what really makes home. Because because mm -hmm. like, like the nuance uh, yeah. between the two is 
it, it comes from that the, the diaspora experience of asking those questions on like how how are you asking this question? What are you looking for in that question? Like, are you looking for like answering what is home and like home is this or that? Or like what really makes home? What are the things that will make home feel like home? Mm. Uh, I think that's a big question yeah. for like the character in, in Tallahassee for Mira, like when she comes home and she, one of the questions she might be asking herself is what really makes home? Like I'm coming to this place, is this really home? Probably not, because when she gets there in her mind, this is not home. But she so badly wanted it, wanted yeah. to be home. Totally. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think there's there's a lot of like I think both both films center around characters whose internal turmoil is definitely affected by the external world. And that external world for all of these characters has to do with displacement. So I think like you see people who are sort of tortured and like um internally kind of like um conflicted about what it is that they want, maybe making messes of their life, running away, trying to like trying to make amends, etc. And in both both films, like that is directly connected to their their positionality in the world, you know, and the ways that they are belong and don't belong. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's the idea of like home and how it affects how it impacts both of the characters. You know, you see one character that's sort of running from it in, in I say dust, who kind of disappears at the end of the film. And then you see one character that's sort of trying to like have a return to home, but it sort of like is, is you know, it's a matter of, as they say in Arabic, it's like it, it doesn't quite go the way that they wish it, you know, the way that she wishes that it would. Um, yeah, so I think I think there is this tension point of like, what does it mean to belong, like to truly belong, not just to a place, but even to yourself. Like, I think both of these characters don't feel at home in themselves, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, do you have any, future collaborations planned we do we do <laughs> we're hoping i mean we're trying we're trying to work on a um a feature of tallahassee so basically like a feature version of tallahassee yeah, yeah. which i think would be really fun and would allow us to spend more time with the, the sister character the yeah. mother character there are some characters that'll be added some that'll yeah. be taken out but yeah but just spending a little bit more time kind of in uh, you know, obviously Tallahassee spent a day in the life of kind of Mita after her release, but a feature would spend a little bit like, longer with her. Will you, I'm just thinking of the sort of star-studded cast of, of Tallahassee. Um, <laughs> do you know if uh, some of those folks will, 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 you, will you act in it or will you recast it? Are you? Undecided. <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> Decided. We're, 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 yeah. we're having those conversations. <laughs> we're trying to figure it out. We have, I mean, do you want to but, say that? The, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've talked to, uh, to some of the, the cast that we already have in the short film. We'd love to work with everyone. Everyone has been incredible. It's really now really early in that hour. So early to, like, process, make yeah, yeah. Because of course, we, we're going to have to wait until we have all of our structure together. Totally. Uh, but we would love to to work with, uh, with some of our cast again and definitely have it going to be uh, yeah. she know, we will see. And she knows. She will totally. Know. So we're, we're, I mean, we're, we're still at a, we're, we're at a stage where we're still like developing the story for the script, et cetera, et cetera. But we are working on the treatment, and that's very exciting. That's very exciting. I, I that film really leaves you wanting to. You live that day. You want more of that story. Like, good. I like yeah. that here yeah yeah i mean i think it felt that way making it yeah. and writing it was, yeah. i'm like what what happens to me then so yeah. i think that's the band speaks with us too yeah. um so do you think that the two of you will work like to write the long the feature length script um will you work collaboratively on that or is that something you're yeah. writing we right we're working yeah. on the treatment i mean we've definitely been working out the kinks of the treatment together so yeah. in terms of like the ideas and kind of figuring that out, I'll probably do the writing. Yeah. She'll Hala's definitely gonna, do the directing. Yeah. Hala's gonna be writing the script, but, yeah. but the good thing is like, we know that we're we're a team. Yes. And as she's writing, I'm always like meeting, we always do these like meetings. We do these and meetings just, like, and talk things out. Yeah. And yeah. come up with ideas together and all yeah. of that, but Hala's gonna be writing the script for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I'm very excited about this. Thanks. Oh, 
Yes. How how long? Just thinking about you, know, you were you were talking about the time that on that you have on set, and that all of the shooting before for Tallahassee, for example, took place like right before lockdown. Um, how long do you? How long does shooting a short take? Was it? Did it take a long time or? Well, in, in normal, in normal, in normal, <laughs> in normal <laughs> people's <laughs> lives. It takes uh, in normal conditions like a, a 22 page script would be probably five days of shooting. Uh, but in our case, we just did not have that luxury, so we had to shoot everything in three days. And so I remember at some point in the during the shoot, I went to her, I'm like, Why did you write 22? Pages? I know she was like, you Why did it have to be like so 15? long? <laughs> I'm, like, no. I'm like, What are you talking about? We're shooting this, like, yeah, we're like, We're already here, <laughs> like, that's all people I are waiting say. for you to call like action. <laughs> She's like, yeah, like, why? like, that's like, the first thought I had, I'm like. <laughs> and we had to, I mean, there were scenes we had to take out because yeah. we just put, we like just totally ran out of time. Yeah. But essentially, yeah, it yeah. should have been five had, to six days. Yeah. It was a three day shoot. Yeah. A three day shoot. Actually, we had one scene that I, I wanted to shoot and we were going to shoot it the weekend after, but I was shooting a music video the weekend after. So I had to wait for the weekend after that. And, and then by that time, COVID, uh, yeah. was like, yeah. So we pushed that scene literally just two weekends, two yeah. weeks later, and oh, yeah. Yeah, lockdown had started. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, three days. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah three, three days. days. Three it was days. a real team effort. Like it was, yeah. I mean, yeah, to your point, like Munir, Rea, Hayat, like they're like, they're, yeah, everyone just really hustled. Yeah, there was even like a scene where we had to shoot twice because we had weather problems like it was it was oh one God, we're doing yeah. that we're doing the shot on Hala and then we're doing the reverse on Shireen by the time we went to the reverse on Shireen just started raining it, it was, was like coming on Hala and then on Shireen yeah, it's like raining yeah, yeah, and storming yeah, yeah. like what just happened like within literally 10 minutes yeah so we had to to shoot the scene all over again the next day and that like things like little things like that just like were happening it was and a lot it was a lot it was a lot yeah. we had too many locations we had a kid and whenever you have a child actor you have to always be very mindful of the time that you have from on you know so there's like a limit there's right? a like, limit yeah, yeah. that you can have some work but luckily the, the mother of the child was was great in that in, in the sense that she was there she was supporting him all the time she kind of like she always had snacks she, she always like calm snacks. down yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. Really helpful. The, the mom was super helpful I would definitely say thank you to her right now because she really helped us so much. She was incredible. Yeah, she was really incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I would love to encourage audience questions if anyone has any. Um, I have a question that's a little bit different, but is is relevant just to thinking about the festival and Arab art spaces. Um, uh, and, you know, thinking about Darin, I know you show, share your work in all kinds of festivals and and Hela, you share your work in a lot of different spaces too. So I was, you know, since we're at an, an Arab film festival, I wonder, is it, what's it like to share work in a space like this versus sharing work in other spaces? Um, it's amazing. I feel, yeah, I think, I think for, for me, it's like, you know, you just, these are the spaces that feel most homey and, you know, the ones that, I don't know. I feel like, the, like you know, we're we're making these stories in part because we believe that they they're important to our communities and they're important to have these conversations with our communities. And so, it just has a different kind of weight to be to be sharing it with people that you know share similar heritage or similar backgrounds or or who might understand certain cultural references in the film that without needing them to be like explained or analyzed or you know um, I don't know. I think that it's like a very different feeling. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with what Hala's saying. Um, like, actually, literally, like yesterday, someone messaged me uh, because they saw that we're doing this today, and they were like, "We're so happy that you're screening at Mizna. We love Mizna, and like always yeah. bringing us great, great work, and 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 you know, uh, giving space to voices and uh, for just uh, us to be discovered by, by new audiences. So yeah. I think this is just like incredible to have that that kind of space that to show our work totally. and. He's not supported us like. Oh my God! Time, so many so ways. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like published work and yeah. Not, yeah, I mean it's like I'm a very yeah. My films there too, so it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a small community, right? So it's always just it's. I wonder what the difference feels like for filmmakers and artists, just being in different spaces, being in different art spaces, and the importance of for us, it feels really important, right, to share your work, to to make space in particular for for 
Arab American artists or Arab artists living in America who are writing stories that you know reflect our community, but also think even and expanding it. I think I think both of you do that in your work. So yeah. seems like a good place to think through some of that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, well, this has been fantastic. It's so great to just sit down on Friday afternoon and chat with the two of you about your work. And I'm now just even more excited about this uh, Tallahassee feature length film. Inshallah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, soon, inshallah, yeah. Just has to sit down and write the script. I just have to write the script. <laughs> My bad, it's me. It's just, like, I just gotta get it done, yeah. Yeah, you're like, it's on me actually, it's all hard, it's 100%. <laughs> you're like, I'm ready to go, it's just. Uh, uh, and you have nothing else to do, right? So, you know, it's just. That's the thing, yeah. <laughs> write the script can I ask one more question I, I maybe there is no real answer but the significance of Tallahassee as the the place as that <laughs> I mean I think there was something I, I just thought there was something really funny about that being the place. I don't know there's just something about being like like it's it's inland it's not even on the beat like of like you know of all the places like it just it just felt like something I could see my family doing you know, or like the, the air families that I know doing is like making a lie, but like the lie doesn't even make sense. It's like a logical lie. Um, yeah, so for some reason it was just, when I was writing the script, it was the, it was like the, the, the one city that came to mind. Yeah. yeah. No, it's perfect. It's really quite perfect. Yeah, I agree. The lines of like, why would I go on vacation for two weeks <laughs> to an inland place in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> um where is the film screening next do you have a lot of places where it's going yeah just at woodstock yeah actually today is screening at woodstock and tomorrow today is woodstock um no sorry tomorrow and sunday at woodstock and then we're doing a few other festivals we're doing um uh DC. A big one. we're doing um boston yeah. and we're doing dc we're doing Guna uh, in egypt it's gonna be our uh uh, our world premiere. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's where you know we have a few um, few festivals coming up in October. It's yeah. very exciting. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It'll be fun. Congrats! It's a great film. I'm really excited that it's circulating and that Thank widely you. And that people will be able to see it. Well, um, oh, we do have one more question. Um, as filmmakers, who or writers, who do you look up to or recommend? Who influences your work? I mean, for me as a writer, it's like I, you know, I mean, I I love Jhumpa Lahiri. <clears throat> Jhumpa Lahiri, um, that we she's a poet, um, Amy Tan. Um, there's so many. That I like the more contemporary folks, it's like. And then the Jarad, I think, is like a beautiful, like you know, especially latest books, is really beautiful. Um, yeah, I would say. I mean, it depends. It kind of depends on the genre, but I always Jhumpa Lahiri is always the first person that I think. So it's really like that's that's sort of my northern northern star. Yeah, there's so many filmmakers. Like I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like roll the list right now, but yeah. like, so many filmmakers that I admire and respect and. Um, I would I would definitely give a, a, a really big shout out to Shireen Baidis because yeah. she's doing incredible work. Uh, we were so honored to so lucky her to have her with so us in Tallahassee, yeah. uh, and like she's she's someone who's doing amazing work um, as a Palestinian American and just like just existing in spaces that we never existed in exactly. before or like even had our names like in, in that space. So I think that's just incredible. And, I would want to just like give Shireen a shout out for that and like you know for being a great inspiration for so many filmmakers, um, especially like Arab Americans. Existing in them and like thriving. Yes, them. like existing absolutely. them. And it's like it's like already yeah. to get to get in the door in those yeah. spaces is already a lot, but I think to get in the door and then to like just like completely kill it yeah. and like be like you know really knock it out of the park yeah. and like is is just yeah it's really remarkable. Yeah, she's a, she's a remarkable person. She is remarkable. It was really exciting to see her in Tallahassee too. Yeah, it was amazing <laughs> to work with her. It was just, yeah, just so exciting to work with her. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, she's incredible. Um, thank you so much. This has been really fun and your 
your work is incredible and it's we're so lucky to have it in the festival and i hope we get to do this again i would love it thank you so much thank you all so much for coming and and thank you so much michelle and we're we're just very honored to have been part of this thank you so much michelle and and everyone at misna and for everybody who's joined us today thank you for tuning in yeah yeah thanks everyone all right bye bye take care